Hello, welcome back to the Beautiful Things channel. How are we today? It has been, I think, over a year since I filmed a What I've Been Making video. Um, and apologies for that. I have actually been making all the things. Um, I've been continuing to make my own wardrobe throughout the whole of 2023, uh, but I just haven't documented any of it. I've shown you pictures of it on my Instagram, but I certainly haven't jumped on and done a YouTube video. So today I am in my new studio. Ta-da! Look, I have a filming space. How exciting is this? Um, and I can finally get round to filming the content that I've been meaning to do for so long and show you some of the things that I've made. Now a lot of the patterns that I'm going to share with you today are older patterns and um, they've been around for a long while, they're not new or anything else but I know you like to see what I've been up to. So here goes. So let's start with this one. I love this one. This is yet another Tilly and the Buttons Lyra. It does or doesn't have pockets? I can't remember. It doesn't have pockets. Now there's a reason it doesn't have pockets. I'll cover that one in just a moment. But it is a Lyra. I absolutely love it. Um, but I did change the sleeves. I've lengthened them and I've made them a little bit wider and I've put these little cuffs on the wrists because I don't actually like um, the elasticated um, cuffs they feel a little bit too tight for me and they bug me so they are extra long um, I like them just to fall over my hands but it's very drapey it's very nice now this fabric this fabric is an absolute pig to work with I don't actually know what it is um, it's a very silky very thin very floaty something um, but one of my lovely students came into my studio and she brought some of this fabric with her to make a top I loved it asked her where it came from and it came from eBay so I ordered the fabric I think it was about three pounds something a meter um, and it is lovely I think it must have some kind of decent fabric inside it because it isn't really sweaty um, and I have worn this in the summer and I haven't absolutely melted in it. It is nice and cool, it feels lovely against the skin um, and it is very nice but it gets eaten up by your sewing machine, it gets eaten up by the overlocker so the finishing on the inside is not fantastic. <laughs> but what I did do with this one is tried something new. I had a go at the Prim Anorak Snaps. So as you know um, from previous videos and posts, I quite often don't bother with the buttonholes on a Lyra because it will just go over your head. Um, I love a popper, I like an easy something, I don't want to have to faff around. So I used the Prim Anorak Snaps. Now they were a challenge um, to get the to grips with initially. I have to admit. Um, I had to do a couple of testers in some samples first of all um, just to get my head around the instructions because there's four parts to setting in an anorak snap. I did use the prim pliers, the love prim pro la, 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 the love prim pliers uh, which did make life a little bit easier um, but I was still having to get to grips with which tool to put into the tool itself and which which popper fastening bit and hole punching bit and various others so it is a bit complicated um, but the lovely Lauren from Guthrie Garney has done a fantastic video all about the pliers and all the different attachments that you can put into them and I just followed that went to that particular part of her video um, and taught myself how to do it and now I've done it I think I can safely say I can do it again so these are the rose gold anorak snaps um, I will link anything that I can down below in the description so that you can go and find it and I'll also link that video from Lauren too so there we go there's make number one I absolutely love this dress um, I haven't worn it for a while let's give you a little twirl um, show you how it moves but I do really really like it 
now I've got a big rile to the right of me full of clothes um, they're everything that I've made this year that I need to video and share with you I'm going to do all of the filming today um, and then I will edit them into smaller chunks and upload them into smaller chunks over the next few weeks for you because a lot of it is summer stuff um, which really should be packed away in the wardrobe however I'm heading off to somewhere hot in less than a month um, so another reason why I need to get it filmed so I can decide what goes up in the loft for the summer what I'm taking on my holiday with me um, and then start fresh for the new year so let's move on to the next item ta-da here we are the next item is another Tilly in the Buttons this is the SD Coward so it is a nice camisole top and wide leg trousers there was a lot of controversy around this pattern if you're in the sewing community you'll know it either works for you or it doesn't I'm not going to go into it because hopefully it's all been brushed under the carpet by now but I love SD I think it is wonderful um, it fits really nicely it covers your bra straps the trousers are elasticated when you make it in a drapey fabric like this you can have the top tucked in to the bottoms and it looks just like a jumpsuit it's super comfortable it's really lovely to wear and I lived in my SDs throughout the whole of the summer um, this one again I'm really not sure where this fabric came from it is I think it's a viscose but it has got a bit of a silky texture to it almost like a suede it's really really lovely very lightweight and it comes from my stash and I think I bought it as a remnant from the dead stock place where we go to buy some of our fabrics. But I genuinely can't remember. Um, so it would have spent its days on this shelf at some point before I decided to make an SD with it. Now, this was the first SD I made and I did try and put pockets in it because what trousers don't have pockets? That's my only complaint about this pattern. But I put the pockets in and they just didn't sit right. It didn't matter where I put them or what I did, they kind of made the line of the trousers pop out and look really ridiculous. So I did just cut them out and whiz down with my overlocker. So this is one of the things about pockets in clothes. If your pattern doesn't have pockets, there's a reason for it. <laughs> And this is something that I always tell myself, but I never ever listen to my own advice. But if it doesn't have pockets, don't try and put them in because there's a reason for it. They looked ridiculous. So out they came. On the pattern, there is some bum pockets that you can put on, but I don't think that they work if you're going to be making an SD from a floaty fabric. Um, so I'm going to show you my other SDs because I've made quite a few. I'm going to whiz through it really quickly but you'll hopefully see the difference between working with a drapey fabric and a more structured fabric. So here is the difference. So I made the shorts version um, for my next one. Um, this is just from a quilting cotton. It's one that I had in the shop for a while. It's these gorgeous little ladies, naked ladies popping out of flowers. Um, and just pop my, pop my facings down. Probably could have done with an iron to be fair. It's been a bit creased up, hasn't been worn for a few months. Um, but I do really like this one. I'm just wearing this one out. I have hemmed it, not tucked it in. Um, and on the back, it has got the bum pockets, as you can see. Now this was the second one that I made in a quilting cotton. And I can definitely say that your choice of fabric print makes a big difference as to whether your Estes will look like pajamas or summer wear. Let me show you why. <laughs> this is the first one that I made. So I made it from this lovely lemon fabric, um, which is really, really cute. But when I wear it, I feel like I'm out in my pajamas. It's fine for hanging around at home, or I could wear the top on its own with a pair of denim cutoffs um, or a nice pair of um, jeans or wide leg trousers and it would look really super summery and fresh but as soon as you pair it with the shorts it does just look like pyjamas so do be very careful about the fabric prints that you choose when you're making an SD I think you'll agree that this looks less like pyjamas in the dark fabric you can still tuck it in if you want to it does still give you that faux 
jumpsuit look um, but I would recommend if you're planning on doing that that you lengthen the bodice ever so slightly um, because once it's hemmed it is still quite short it doesn't really give you a lot of tucking in leeway if you wear the shorts up nice and high where they're supposed to be again it doesn't have inseam pockets but it has got the bum pockets and they are obviously optional and I think if you didn't have the bum pockets they would look even more like pajamas so this is the short set in a quilting cotton let me show you the short set in a floaty fabric because this is where I really start to love Esty even more so here we go. This one is probably my favourite. I wore it the most throughout the whole of the summer and I did wear it with my big belt um, just to give it a bit more of a classier feel. It is leftovers, it's remnants. I got this out of about a metre and a half. Yes, apologies, the bra doesn't work with this, but hey-ho. Um, out of remnants from a previous indigo dress that I'd made. Um, the fabric was a crepe, a viscose crepe, and it was from the Utrecht Fabric Market but I've lived and died in this one throughout the summer. Um, it's so comfortable, it's so cool. I don't put the pockets on the back when I'm working with the drapey fabric because they just don't sit right, um, in my opinion, and it just makes it look a little bit more effortless, a little bit more classy, and I always wear it tucked in, so it's like a little jumpsuit. I think, I don't know if I've even hemmed this. Oh no, I have. I've just done a very narrow hem. I've overlocked it and just turned it under, but I did lengthen this bodice ever so slightly so that I could get it tucked in um, nicely. But yeah, drapey fabric, Esty short set, I think is the absolute go-to. I've actually made two more. Well, no, I haven't, I'm lying. I've made, I'm not gonna put them on for you, there's no point, but I'll show you on the hanger. I've made a couple more. This one, which again is lovely. This was a remnant from my stash. Um, I think it looks fabulous, especially where I'm going to somewhere kind of hot in the near future. This one's a really good holiday one, um, really good fun. This fabric, I think is from the 70s. It was donated to me in a suitcase full of fabric. There's a video on it somewhere, um, way back when. Um, from a gentleman whose wife used to be a fashion designer who passed away um, and he donated me two huge suitcases full of fabric. Um, this was very early lockdown, I think, um, and there was some absolute stunners in there. Some of the stuff was just absolutely beautiful, really vibrant, really bold, um, and really, really lovely quality. So this had been sitting in my stash for some time. I was gonna make a Lyra or an Indigo from it, um, but then I thought, no, it's absolutely perfect for an SD cohort. So love that one. Um, and then I did make one more top from the leftovers of my Lyra dress. So I haven't got bottoms, but I have just got the top. And again, this is really lovely. If I wanna pair it with um, denim shorts, um, or a nice pair of cream cropped jeans or something like that for summer. So yeah, you saw me this summer, or if you saw me this summer, I was most likely rocking a Tilly and the Buttons Esty Coward. I absolutely love it. So one last Tilly and the Buttons for you. This one is desperately in need of an iron, so apologies for all of the creases, but again, I just had to get it off the rack and show you. It has pockets. Um, and it's gorgeous. This is the Sky Sundress, again by Tilly. Now, I have made some tweaks to this and I have made some changes um, because I did struggle with it. It is a very, very simple beginner-friendly pattern. By that, I mean that it's not lined, it doesn't have any facings, it just has bias binding at the armholes and the neckline. Personally, I hate that with a dress. I like my dresses to be lined. So I made two bodices and I bagged them out. So to do that, it did mean that I had to cut the centre back um, and add some seam allowance so that I could sew my two bodices right sides together and bag them out through the shoulder straps. Um, 
so it was a little bit more convoluted but I'm very pleased I did it. It just gives the garment a little bit more structure at the top, makes it more comfortable if you were using a fabric that was a little bit see-through. Oh gosh, if you were using a fabric that was a little bit see-through um, then obviously you would want to do that anyway. I was a bit disappointed when I read the instructions. I thought that they would tie up straps um, and they're not. These little ties are just little tubes that you make that you tie onto the shoulder straps just to make it look like they're tied up. Um, and whilst that's great, it does mean that you do have to, and I would highly recommend you do this, you try your garment on before you finalise your shoulder placement. Because when I sewed this together, the shoulder straps literally fell off me. It hung right down, like almost down here it showed loads and loads of side boob and it just didn't fit correctly at the top so i did have to do a lot of tweaking i'm pretty sure if you followed the instructions <laughs> that wouldn't happen but you know once you're a dressmaker and you make things for yourself and you've made a lot of things for yourself it's really easy to go well i would do this 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 and this with that pattern um, and it doesn't always work to your advantage so just be forewarned. I have had to make some changes. I did have to take it in on the side seam um, up here as well so that it didn't show off too much. But I'm happy with the finished overall garment. I don't actually think I would make this again in a hurry um, because whilst I like it, I like this particular one, I wouldn't say it would be a go-to summer dress for me. But if you are wanting to make a summer dress and you are a beginner, it is very beginner friendly and as always Tilly's instructions are really clear and really great. Whether you choose to follow them is a whole other thing. <laughs> But I will insert some pictures here for you um, because I wore this on my holiday last year to Mexico and I had my daughter with me. She took some fabulous photos um, and it was a really, really perfect holiday garment. It's super cool, really nice to wear on a hot evening um, and it looked really, really lovely with a pair of high heels. Um, and with a drink in my hand. So hopefully you will enjoy those photos so that is all my Tilly and the Buttons things for now. Um, so I think I will wrap this particular video up here um, and let you enjoy it. And then I'm going to carry on filming and I'll upload some more videos at a later date. But I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've learned some bits and pieces from it. Please share with me in the comments if you've made any of these garments and what your thoughts are on them because I'd love to know. Um, and I will see you again in my next one. Thank you very much for watching. See you later.